Well, good morning and uh, good Thursday morning, I should say. Welcome to Miyagi Mornings number 19. That's what it makes sense to me anyway. I think that's where we're at. Um, today's question that, that prompted this episode is on cryptocurrency. And we've talked about that a lot lately. And, and I realize that we have a ton of people listening who are very new to the subject. They don't know much about it. They want to learn more. They're starting to realize how important this is going to be in the coming decade. It, it really is, guys. I mean... We're entering a world where the people that control the world's money say you'll own nothing and you'll be happy. And one thing you can actually own that they can't take away from you is, is a private key to various cryptocurrencies or private keys to very, various cryptocurrencies. But if you're going to use cryptocurrencies for more than a store of wealth, and you should or you're not really understanding what they are, then at times you're going to need to send cryptocurrencies around and move them from one place to another for various reasons. One, because you wanted to buy something from somebody, so you're sending it to them. And the other would be, well, you want to change it from one crypto to another, and wherever it is, you can't do that, so you need to move it, let's say, from a wallet to an exchange or something like that. And that leads to fees. And fees are something that a lot of people don't seem to understand. And when people say, well, Bitcoin fees are really high compared to something like Litecoin or Bitcoin cash fees, they don't really understand what that means. Well, let's make it concrete first of all, and then we'll explain where these fees come from and how it all works. So this morning, I, I just cracked open my, my wallet and said, hey, if I'm going to send 100 bucks worth of Bitcoin to an exchange, because it doesn't really matter where it goes, it's, it, there's, you're going through the network, through the blockchain, how much is it going to cost me? And it was around two bucks, a little two bucks and change. So it was about 2%. In the world of cryptocurrency, that's expensive. In the world of money, that's not that bad. Um, if you pay me $100 with PayPal, it costs you $100, but I pay fees to PayPal, and it costs me more than 2 bucks to take 100 bucks from you. As a seller, you know, the buyer pays the fee, so it works out for me, but sooner or later I'm going to want to move that money, and I'm going to pay the fee anyway. So Bitcoin fees are about on par in the range of what it costs to do business with PayPal. There's a way to change that somewhat, and I'll explain that in a second. Then I said, okay, what if I was going to send myself $100 worth of Bitcoin cash? What's the fees on that? infinitesimally low. It was a penny. So I could send myself Bitcoin cash or send somebody Bitcoin cash at a penny for $100. Or I could send someone $100 worth of Bitcoin and pay two bucks to do it. Well, if it's a large transaction or lots of transactions, that really starts to matter, doesn't it? Not to mention the Bitcoin cash transaction will go quicker and cost less money. So will Litecoin. So will almost every non-ether based coin on the planet and when people say well this is better money than bitcoin if you're talking about money from a standpoint of being able to send it to people and what it's going to cost you to do it and how long it's going to take to get there almost not all but almost every <clears throat> non-ether based coin is better for money than bitcoin so what makes bitcoin so valuable it's very secure and it's seen as a store of value and what we're about to get to when people want to exchange it almost anything listed on any exchange will be exchangeable for bitcoin Sometimes they have other exchange boards. So we, when we talk about exchanges, you'll have, they call them markets, but in, in stocks we would call them boards, you know, like Dow Jones, et cetera, right? So different things are on different boards. Well, with cryptocurrency, it'll work. Let's say uh, uh, an exchange might have Bitcoin, Ether, and USDT, Tether, is the three markets where here's what's listed, and for this you can get this. So now let's say you are holding a currency like Bitcoin Cash, and you want to change it into Litecoin for whatever reason. You're, unless you use like a swap service like a Changely or something like that, which has its own embedded fees, it's going to be the case that you're going to need to convert it to something on an exchange that uses, that, that, that will allow you to make the trade. So if, let's say, CoinX allows you to buy Litecoin for Bitcoin, Ether, or USDT, and it also allows you to convert Bitcoin Cash into any one of those, then once it's on the exchange, you can convert it to anything you want and then exchange it to a new thing and then take it back off. But in every send and receive, there's going to be a fee. Now, when we get in exchanges, exchanges have their own fees. That's an exchange fee. It's how they make their money. We'll leave that out for today. Just know that that's a thing. When you buy and sell on an exchange, they charge, and they'll say right there how much it's going to cost you. It's usually really, really low. Exchanges make a little bit on a lot to provide liquidity between accounts and security. 
And that's how they make their money. And we pay for what we want in a society that's free and open. The transaction fees come from something different, though. People generally know about things like mining. Some, some coins call it minting. Some coins have, have different types of, of protocols. But one way or another, there's computers that make up a network we call a blockchain. And those computers do work of some sort to verify that when I send you money, you get it, and that my money's actually gone, and you actually can take the money you have and do something with it, right? That, that it, it's not been, like, think about this. It's data, so it could be replicated without this service, meaning that I have a token for one Bitcoin, and I can control, control C, control V, control V, control V, control V, control V, control V. Have you ever wondered why that's not possible? Since it's just a string of data, why can't I make more of them and counterfeit? Well, because miners are also transaction verifiers. And that blockchain, if you watch my old video that I did for you in Miyagi Mornings about blockchain, all these computers come to consensus, kind of all put their hand up and say, hey, this is where we're at in, in the sequence now. And they all go, yes, we all agree. Boom, they move to the next block. That's how that happens. Well, what do you think those people want in return for this? See, cryptocurrency works in a very democratic way, but a free market democratic way, in that people that want to participate get a vote by the way they participate. Not everybody gets a vote uh, on what they want someone else to do. Totally different. And people, and the other principle behind that is people do act in their own self-interest. You cannot like that, but that's the truth. Everybody acts in their self-interest. And if you don't, then go give all your stuff away. Oh, I don't want to, because you act in your self-interest. Well, some people do give all their self stuff away. Well, that's because that's their, in their self and what they value in their self, that is in their self-interest. We all do things, I didn't say for gain, I said in our self-interest. Many people consider gain self-interest. So just think that right now you have, and, and desktop computers don't work for this really very well anymore, but just, just to make this easy, you have 10 desktop computers running where you hear the processor going, hmm, I mean, they are cranking. They're putting everything they have out. You have a closet. You have stacks, five and five with cooling fans and everything so they don't burn up. And you're going to push a button and they're just going to run full speed, 24-7, 365. Why would you do that? You're going to pay an electric bill for that, right? Electricity's not free. It's energy used in mining, right? So you would want something in return for that. And the more computers and the more powerful for the longer time, the more money you would want. That's where the fees come from. And different networks have different protocols that change what fees cost. Now, even within a network, so I said today, Bitcoin, two bucks to send a hundred. Well, if I change it to a lower priority, cheaper cost, I could do it for about a dollar or 20 this morning. And that will change based on the network load. Bitcoin Cash, no reason to do it. That's a penny. Who cares? R, it's way, it's a fraction of a penny. Litecoin, fraction of a penny. Who cares? Who gives a shit? No one. And that's because those networks were designed to be more useful for transactional trades. That was their goal. R, or Pirate Chain, was designed to have that going for it. It uses the Bitcoin blockchain, so it gets Bitcoin security. It, it takes less load on computers so people are willing to participate, and it's completely and totally private and totally decrypted, and no one can see anything unless you allow them to with a view key. So to me, what is the best current cryptocurrency for money if the other party will take it? R, Pirate Chain. It is the best currency there is if the other party will take it. This is why do people spend so much money to spend Bitcoin? Other, the number one cryptocurrency I accept for memberships is Bitcoin. Do you think it's because I want to receive Bitcoin? I, I do. But do you think it's because it's my preference? No. Of course not. It has high fees. And it's public. People can look up transactions on a blockchain. Doesn't mean I don't hold Bitcoin. Bitcoin has incredible value. And I know people don't like this term, but as digital gold. In that, it is the reserve trading currency that makes all the other currencies fungible into other currencies. So it has value as an investor, but I don't keep all my money in Bitcoin. I would never do that. I think people that are maximalists are fools. You never know what's going to happen. And you also now have all your wealth in a public ledger that people can look up, see, and decipher. So all of these things have different levels of fees and different ways to select them, or they're flat and cheap. So Litecoin, flat and cheap. 
There's other some things you can play around with, but you don't need to on daily transactional activity. Same with Bitcoin Cash, same with R, same with ARC. All of these you know, altcoins have that. Ethereum. <laughs> Ethereum is a freaking mess. Ethereum, when you go to send, you'll see there's a contract send cost and you pay in gas. And like the minimum gas will be like 24, you know, thousand gas and it'll cost so much ETH. And that, I looked at an Ethereum transaction today. It was like from a buck forty-four down to like seventy-five cents. Even though it wasn't Ethereum, it was an Ethereum-based token. In this case, basic attention token for a hundred bucks. So it was cheaper than Bitcoin, but still expensive. The less gas you put on it, just like gas on an accelerator, the the, the slower it'll go, but the less it'll cost you. You get more mileage, but it takes you longer to get there. Think of it like getting on an airplane. If I fly first class and you fly coach. My bag goes on the plane last, so it comes off first. I walk right past the line to get on the plane to get to get the ticket counter taken care of to priority. They take care of me immediately. You go to security, you're held up there. I go right past that, right through the state uh, you know, surveillance apparatus. And when it's time to get on the plane, I get on first and I get off first, and I'm drinking wine while you're sitting in the back. And I've already got my bag. I'm in my car and to my hotel, and you're still standing at the baggage carousel or in front of the car rental line while a guy looks like he's taking a dump and solving a calculus problem trying to find your car that you reserved three months ago. But eventually you get your car and you go on, and how important is the time to you? And that's the way to think about these fees and whether you're going to pay less and wait longer. If I'm sending money to my own account on an exchange, and I'm not trying to make a buy really, really fast, which is probably a bad idea anyway, because you're not thinking when you're in that mode. I don't give a shit if it takes a day to get there. I don't care. If I'm sending you money to buy a boat and I want to take the boat and leave, I'm going to put a higher priority on it because you're not going to accept it until you see the transaction go through. And that's how this all works. And it's just a matter of people that provide a service want to be compensated for it. And it's why I don't think Bitcoin makes great money. I think it makes a great reserve currency because you only move it very occasionally based on the need to do trades. And an important thing to understand, I know this one's going long, but this is, this is really important to understand. If you can buy a currency on an exchange and use it to get another currency you want, you're probably better off doing that because there's no send. You don't have these big transaction fees in between with Bitcoin and some other stuff. So that's how that all works. I know it might be clear as mud now, but I do want to make it a piece of advice. Uh, the MeWe cryptocurrency group would be a great thing to join, but I put on there today a thing called Dash School. When Dash really started taking off, they put this gal uh, on their channel, and she did a lot of videos to explain what cryptocurrency was. There's a playlist called Dash School. The first three videos of the six have nothing to do with Dash. It's just blockchain, how blockchain works, and why blockchain works. If you're struggling with this, start there. Then come back and listen to this video again. I bet it'll make more sense. And join us on the MeWe Cryptocurrency Practical Discussion Group. And uh, there's plenty of people that know more than me that will help you get answers. Take care, guys. Long edition of Miyagi Mornings. We'll come back to you with a short one tomorrow. And I need a topic. Please let me know what you want to hear in the comments below or email me. Take care, guys.